William Hung's Champion by Choice, Chapter 12, How to Add Value to Others. When I got my first taste of fame, a friend told me, if you charge a dollar every time you take a picture with someone, you'll be a millionaire. I don't know how much I will have made over the last 15 years, but even if it was a million dollars, who wants to do that? The fact is, the more people take photographs of me, the better off I am. When they do, they will naturally spread those around to their friends and post the pictures on their social media networks. It's good for my brand. More importantly, it's something I can do to show my gratefulness to my fans who are largely responsible for my success as an entertainer. And he does respond to DMs on Instagram, by the way. Just I'm letting you know. I've responded to a couple of his stories, and he always writes back, thank you. Very friendly guy. Being available for photo opportunities with fans hasn't given me the same sphere of influence as, say, Usher. That's not going to happen, but as a result, I've developed a larger fan base than many other former American Idol contestants. I used to get scared when a group of people would confront me to get a picture. I will never forget how a bunch of girls wanted to take pictures with me as I was waiting for my flight to go to Houston. Those girls mobbed me. Not maliciously, but they still freaked me out because I had never encountered that situation before. I remember I still had plenty of time before my flight, so I agreed to take pictures with all of them, one by one. There were 20 to 30 girls total. They're all Caucasian, and they're mostly teenagers or young adults. A friend in the public relations business explained to me that I needed to embrace it. Don't try to run away. Be nice to them. If you can't be gracious even to people who support you, where is that going to get you? You don't have to even be borderline famous to have supporters. As I said in a previous chapter, we all have a network. Think about the things that you can do to add value to those people. Maybe it's not taking a photo with them. But the philosophy behind it is the same. Make yourself available. A lot of celebrities, especially A-list celebrities, are not going to want to take pictures with fans in random public places. If they attend an event where they expect to be photographed with fans, such as a VIP meeting beat, they expect to do so. That's fine. But they're not obligated to take photos with fans on the street. It's important to remember that choosing to take photos is just that a choice. Offering something of value to your supporters is a good practice, regardless of what comes from it. That said, some of those supporters will reciprocate and provide you with something of value. Most of them probably won't, but that's not the point. The benefits you'll derive from the few who, will be, who do will be worth it. Let me clarify what I mean by adding value. Doing something for people that should naturally be a part of a product, job, or service does not add value. Adding value requires that you give people something they want, but don't expect. Again, taking photos with fans is not in the job description, so when a celebrity does agree to take one, that person is offering something extra. In providing something of value, I believe it's important to strike the right balance. Carol Cox, a mentor of mine, says it's imperative to have your own unique framework for how to work with clients. She encourages entrepreneurs to give potential clients enough information to build trust. However, if you give away too much information, then your potential clients will solve their problems without you. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, how is it possible for me to hold information back while still coming across as someone who genuinely adds value? The key is to solve the problems that are so complicated they require co cooperation. Simple example, ice. Selling ice is a dead end job. Anyone can cool water to below freezing. There's no demand for artisanal ice. <laughs> but there's a need for freezer repair. You can teach in a series of YouTube videos how to fix your own freezer. A few people will watch and make the repair. A lot more people will see you successfully fixing a freezer and decide, that's too complicated for me, that, that that person knows how to fix my freezer, and I'm going to hire them. A less simple example is how Carol Cox built her enterprise in developing signature talks for female entrepreneurs. She is very transparent about her methods. 
She even allows visitors to her site to download PDFs free of charge and create their own signature talk. They can do so if they're willing to follow her step-by-step -step process and then share the feedback they get from the people in their network. She sees it as a win-win situation. She's able to offer her visitors something of value, her process, and in return that person shares something of value, feedback. It also allows her to establish rapport and prove that she knows what she's doing. Cox can help a person create a signature talk in about four to five hours of actual work time. There are some preparations beforehand, some editing afterwards, as well as intensive three-hour one-on-one session to put the pieces of the puzzle together, so to speak. Without the expertise of someone like Cox, that work might take exponentially longer or people might just discard their talk altogether due to frustration or self-doubt. When I mentor speakers and Toastmasters, I follow a method similar to that of Cox. I seek to help someone reverse engineer a speech by initially determining what goals that person wants to achieve. Once they establish those goals, we can focus on the stories that fit into that speech. I try to remove the guesswork for others so that they feel secure that what they have to say is important, compelling, and to the point. An awkward or embarrassing first speech can cripple a person's confidence, which can deter them from getting back out there. As you think about how you can provide value to others, consider the area or areas in which you have some degree of expertise. We all have something to offer. Maybe your job provides you with specialization in a certain field. Maybe a discipline you studied in college could be put to good use to help others. Or maybe you have a hobby that lends itself to the task. The point is, you have something that other people need. By discovering what that something is, you can add value to the lives of others. That's how you build fruitful, long-term, relationships.